hello and welcome youtube uh, so hopefully you're having a wonderful time in today's video i will cover the uh, the suncor uh, stock the ticker name is su myself pramod kumar i am a cfa charter holder and frm certified all most of the analysis of this video is based on the very latest third quarter 2020 statement except the when i compute the models then i use the 10 year of historical data and then also use uh, the scenario analysis basically if what will be the price of the what will be the return if you we enter with the current price now and uh, hold this stock for few uh, for few years so that will be a very exciting journey so thanks for uh, shiva who is the youtuber who requested this video okay so let's get started as you can see on the valuation matrix this ticker is also on very huge discount so pretty much on uh, uh, around 35 percent uh, this stock is on discount which is very good right right now the company has having uh, the loss as we can see the earning per share is negative uh, one of the reason here is because this is the energy, uh, the pipeline, uh, the company and uh, the government has put the restrictions uh, in Alberta, which has uh, recently been lifted off. So no need to uh, worry from uh, that perspective. Another good point here is, uh, is this dividend yield. The dividend is 5.42% uh, and, and this is a quarterly dividend. So right now the dividend is... 0.21 uh, per quarter as compared to the last year uh, this is pretty half of what but the still the company is is paying so that's pretty good and also the five year dividend growth is almost eight percent so that's that's very nice and if you see the last three year dividend growth is 8.4 per uh, eight percent so this means that company is also uh, growing the dividend right so that's a very positive flag very positive sign okay so if i see the overall uh, overall history i can uh, i just plot this one so this is the ticker name su.co uh, so this you can see the dividend is always uh, always available uh, right and that's good but because of this covid the price uh, was around 45 and then it drops around very low right at the 15 something but it's still unable to go up so it seems like it's still at very very low price right now right but overall we can see historically if i see the max even the max the price was somewhere here right on the average so this mean very very long historical average so this is the historical i can say the long term average right the price is still way below that so it has a lot of room to go up overall i think the very high it uh, so so this means the, the stock is really very discounted now the question is uh, does it make sense to enter into the uh, this company uh, we'll look into the financial highlights and debts uh, right because the good thing to make money is when uh, when the things are low so we have a lot of room to go up so that's one thing pretty much i like it is pretty much very low i don't think so it should go further lower than that right because there is no room there as well okay so if i see from the financial highlight uh here from comparing from the last three months to and this one is comparing to the last nine months uh, for sure there is a discount there and uh, uh, the loss because the uh, the loss if you can see here is 179 million only when at the same time uh, in the last year the company was making around 1.1 almost 1 billion a dollar right uh, in terms of money but good thing is in in this quarter as uh, the company is making uh, making the profit is not to, uh, not in the loss okay so now let's see on their debt as well so this is their uh, the short term debt the short term debt for sure we can see is gross right it grows as compared to the from 2.1 to 2.5 billion dollars the overall debt is also increased right as compared to the last uh, as compared to the last year right uh, but if we can see the total net debt is 19 
0.7 billion dollars as compared to so, so the, almost like a so almost three uh, three billion dollar right increase in in that a little bit more actually so yeah so the company is uh, taking the more debt and that the reason for sure is because the company want to survive in the in the times of the covid 19 because the production was stopped by the government which is just got lifted when i was analyzing the stock okay let's quickly look into the revenue now so the revenue looks uh, uh quite quite okay so the company is making right 30 uh almost 30 billion in revenue uh, and the net income is around 2.18 and which is bit, looks like bit consistent right in the past overall there is a some dip here in 2016 and 17 but then it it comes up so this chart shows the revenue growth which is like a swing uh, right it goes up and down and we can see now why because 2016 uh, again it was in the last yes chart we can see the revenue was less but overall the good point here which i like to mention here is together is if they see the revenue the gross uh, margin growth is continuously increasing where in the recent time for sure if we just ignore this piece overall it's increasing right uh, there is a minor dip here but then overall it just picked up and this is another good point i like about this share is that uh, the it seems like the number of outstanding share is is low so what does it mean it means that company from time to time it's going and buying its share so we are getting uh, the the money from uh, two two time two ways right so as an investor we get the dividend dividends from the company right that's one thing and second thing if the company is doing share buyback right share buyback then it will increase it if there is less share in the um, uh, in the uh, in the market so this means the overall the whatever our share price is is increased so this is another way of giving the money back so that's also very good so if from the short term liquidity looks the company is close to one so which is not bad so pretty much whatever their expenditure is they are uh, able to have that much of uh, cash and short term uh, uh, assets in order to cover that so that's from uh, that side so let's quickly look into now i'll open the spreadsheet and and then we can uh, look into so yeah so this is the two models i have used to uh to see what will be the fair price right uh, of the stock right now is it still a good price or uh or, or not right so this is the first model if we i go and buy the full as a full company so this is uh their share outstanding historically and this is their market cap market cap is nothing but the average uh share time surprise and then plus that minus cash so this is the total enterprise value so if you can see here the enterprise value was 58 billion is coming in 2010 and now it's also it's pretty much staying around the same it it, it drops and then increase around 56 billion the ev over ebitda is uh, it's is a good ratio they keep consistent so this means the company is generating enough cash uh, cash flow to to recover if you go basically to go and buy the whole company you can get your money back within less than six years which is very good and the debt over EBITDA is not so this means the company is generating enough cash to cover its debt right so as you can see it was 1.44 and now it's only one right so what i have done here i have used uh, uh, the very conservative so the EBITDA growth rate which is uh, for the 10 year you can see only two percent but in the last five or three years the growth is very high right if especially in the five years 10 percent but i was very i'm very conservative i used to two percent growth rate and then continuously growing the earning the operating income right and then also reducing this income at two one percent and then i say after 10 years the company will grow as just like a uh, economy right u.s economy and discounted by the 10% required return so i assume that i need 
at least minimum of 10% required return. If I do the math and uh, divide it by the number of share outstanding, which is 1.5 billion, my price come as $33 per share. Okay, so this is from the first model. If with the next model on the free cash flow, similarly, I have computed the free cash flow. Uh, this is the math and then and this is the price. So the from the free cash flow per share is uh, basically this is how it's computed and the free cash flow yield is coming as 14% right we, so which is very high so basically if uh, you buy the share how much percentage of free cash flow you will get so pretty much is coming as now as 7.9% it was a very low before and higher so again using this model I'm again very conservative use only 7.7% uh, 7.62% 7 as the free cash flow growth rate discounted by 2% here I assume I can sell the company at the rate or at the time at 10 times of its 10 years multiple if I use this model I get my price of $36.12 okay here in this one I have also used the future I can also show you the future price so I is if uh, here I have 68 million uh, sorry billion dollars so I assume the company value after 10 year will be 68 billion divided by number of share outstanding here I'm not reducing the shares and come as 44 dollars right which is a bit conservative but that's what uh, my price is okay so now I have these uh, these prices and uh, let's compute the see what is my the price right now okay so with the I'm not using the net profit model because the net profit is negative here so I'm just put it zero so with the first model this is the price second model this is the price so the total price coming as $34.71 right now so the data what I have used here is on the in this model is the US dollar US because the ticker is also in US so that's why the price right now uh, is 11.90 uh, right now as a US price in the Toronto Stock Exchange the trigger is $15 but we can easily convert this price to both to 1.35 to come up with the Canadian dollars right so I just want to uh, mention that here okay so similarly on the future when I do the math with two uh, two models I'll get this 41.54 dollars okay now I have both the number this number and this number so let's take this number and see what is my IRR right what's my internal rate of return so here I'm using the free cash flow model so I say okay if I go today and buy the uh, share of with the $11.90 and then I got every year uh, this much uh, free cash flow back right which uh, basically this is the same what I have computed here and I just divide by the number of share outstanding which is 1.5 billion right and then I sell it after the 10 year is 41 dollars right so what is my uh, my return so as you can see my return is 30 almost 32 percent which is very good so that's the power of uh, entering uh, and the buying the company at the low price okay so let me show you how what will be the return if I enter into the different price so here I'm showing the different return so I have already computed this but if you compute if you enter into $15 you'll get like a 27% return if you enter into $17 then this but if you enter into $20 then we'll get like a 20 or uh, dollar 30 percent return so this is the different return based on the different uh, the price points right so which is a uh, what do you think is this a good return or not good return or do you think uh, I think this stock should will come back soon and uh, yeah so let me know your opinion or any other comments which you want me to do and don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like it and if you want me to cover any other video just like it's been requested by Mr. Shiva so please uh, comment it as well and let me know your 
opinion about their stock as well okay thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon in uh, the new video bye for now